Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today we have a gem of a show. Are masculine men faithful to their wives? Is that a good question? I hope so. It's very specific, right? We're going to get into that today. I got two stories on deck. If you have a story you want to share, go to writemac.com, W-R-I-T-E-M-A-C.com. Send your story, and I could give you my take in a YouTube live stream like this. Keep your names out of it. It's actually a really good way to go because it's an objective opinion from someone that does breakups, has a lot of experience with it. It's not going to tell you what you want to hear. Uh, just my pure take. And I got a lot of experience in this stuff. Who specializes in breakups, right? People a lot of times go, I do this, I do that. I do breakups. All right, and if you have a real issue in your relationship, even if it's not a breakup, or you have some anxiety issues or some work issues, go ahead and book a live coaching session with myself and we can fully unpack that and I'll help you out. If I don't help you out, I'll give you a refund. It's not useful and helpful. Eduardo Martinez, welcome to the live stream. You're riding solo, shotgun right now. It's a pleasure to have you, my friend. All right, so to get into it, are masculine men faithful to their wives? First of all, the biggest factor affecting if someone is faithful or not is their values and morals. Everyone has their own code of conduct on what is right or wrong and that which they would never do and that which they would maybe do if the circumstances are right. Interestingly, I've met many men who say they would never cheat and never have, who under the right circumstances, under the right circumstances, especially if alcohol is involved, break this rule. In regards to masculine men being more likely to be faithful to their wives, there will never be a study to accurately answer that scientifically. My take is this. If you're with a man that has one, women, plural, throwing themselves at him, such as a pro athlete or a rock star, then masculine or not, he will be more likely to cheat. I don't believe being more masculine would ensure a more faithful man I do believe a devoutly religious man would be more likely to be faithful, but even they can crack. It's best not to generalize on if a man is masculine, which, let's be honest, is a debatable label. As a man can be masculine one moment and feminine the next, the man that's most likely to be faithful and stay faithful is the man that believes in discipline and keeps his word at all costs. This can be observed in how he conducts himself outside the marriage or relationship. Is he always on time? Does he keep his word? Is he dedicated to his career? And is he a man of integrity and virtue? Does he do the right thing even when it's hard to do so? These characteristics are more relatable to him being faithful, much more so than if he was masculine or not. How you do one thing is how you do everything. It's not 100% true, that statement, but it's damn close. All right, we'll fully unpack this a little deeper now. <clears throat> I'm well, thank you. So number one, masculinity is not something that's an absolute characteristic. So there's a lot of masculinity videos, channels. Someone to be masculine 100% of the time is, is really not human. The human soul has evolved to be masculine and feminine with different circumstances. Okay. So a circumstance, phobia, fear, or a breakup can easily turn the most masculine of men feminine for the moment or a day or a week. I've had men... Uh, that I've worked with that are law enforcement, that are military, highly masculine individuals, they get in a breakup and they turn feminine. So circumstances, phobias, fear, you can jump in and out of the masculine and the feminine. Okay? The most masculine of men will surprise you at some point. And this applies to men that seem femme also. So for example, if a man seems on the feminine side, but if the circumstances is right, he might kick someone's ass for talking shit about his mom. 
Okay, so it goes both ways. This idea that someone's just masculine or feminine is extremely uh, narrow-minded. There are people that tend to be 80% masculine, but like I said, circumstances, phobia, fears, things that happen in your life can turn someone into the feminine real quick, right? So this idea that you're just going to be with someone that's 100% masculine, they're going to surprise you. And women can be fe feminine. Women can be become masculine, okay? This is not something that is... Uh, written already. It's fluent. Number two, if a man has lots of options, he will be more likely to break. He'll be more likely to cheat. Pro athletes and rock stars are the top of the food chain. That's just how it is in our society. In most societies, they make a lot of money in ooze of social proofing. Those are the two things that will get a lot of guys more play, a lot of attention. Okay? Someone add in if they're good looking, but that's that's farther down. If they make a lot of money and they have social proofing, meaning that they have a lot of fans, a lot of people saying to everyone else, wow, this person's important and special. And it just goes back to, you know, someone that's famous that gets asked for their autograph. People think they know them. People think they're somehow better than them. And it leads to more women being attracted to them. What's the percentage of these guys that are faithful? Pro athletes, rock stars. I don't know. I, again, I wouldn't do a scientific study on this because a lot of them would probably lie. But it's going to be much more difficult if you have 100 women at your hotel door and you have a certain lifestyle to be faithful. It's just reality. Someone say, oh, no, it's about choice. It's what, it is what it is, okay? Now, if you have a situation like a doctor's office, now this is really interesting because I have some insight on this being a, a breakup coach and dealing with men and women. I have about 60% men, 40% women as my clients. And... There's been more than one incident where a woman works as a nurse or staff at a doctor's office or hospital, and she's hooking up with the doctor who's married. In some cases, she's married. In some cases, she's not married. So why doesn't she choose one other office staff or another male nurse or the janitor? Just how it always is. They're having an affair with the doctor. Why is that? The doctor's kind of the rock star of the office, right? He's got social proofing. He makes good money. He helps people. People look up to him. Okay? It's a similar situation. So they're more likely to cheat. They somehow never choose another nurse or the janitor, although the janitor is usually the one who to catch them. I've had this a couple of times where the janitor saw us messing around. If... The masculine man has status and money. He'll be more likely to cheat because he always has fresh candidates. Okay. Now, there was a very famous experiment, and I don't know exactly when it's done. It's in a lot of self-help books. It's called the something like the marshmallow experiment. Um, it was done by Stanford. They took these kids that were, I think, between three, four, five years old. Don't quote me on that. But you can look up Marshmallow Experiment on Google, and I think it'll probably come up, or Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. Basically, what they did is they took two marshmallows, they put it in front of the little, or they took one marshmallow, they put it in front of the kid, and they said, look, we're going to give you 15 minutes. If you don't eat that marshmallow while you're alone in this room, we'll give you a second marshmallow, right? So a lot of this had to do with um, delayed gratification. So they studied these kids 20, 30 years later, and the kid that, the kids that waited for the second marshmallow and were prone to delayed gratification were much more successful. Now, here's the thing. There's something else about that experiment to think about temptation, right? So what if they had an experiment with grown men in their thirties with a highly attractive woman in the room that was interested in hooking up? We'll just leave it at that. And you said, Hey, you can be in this room with her for an hour and she's more than willing to hook up. Uh, but if you don't, then you'll get to go home to your wife as a consolation prize. Hmm. That would be an interesting experiment. So I think the temptation is a big part of it, right? And if you're tempted more times than not, even these little kids, if they got given this experiment every day for a month, they probably, some of them would crack, right? So getting back to number three, hypergamy states that women will always go for a guy they believe to be equal to them or above them. 
They want to feel like this is a guy that a lot of other women want and that is truly the best they can do, right? This is across the board. This has been discussed many times on many channels. It's nothing new to a lot of people, okay? And it, it lends to my point about women that work in a doctor's office that usually want to date the doctor, not the janitor. Saying that, no problem with the janitor. I'm just stating the facts. Now, men will sacrifice a woman's character or status for her hot looks or how easy is she to sleep with. Not all men, but a large portion. Does that make sense? Men will sacrifice a woman's character or status. So she could be a low down, dirty shame. She could have things that you hate about her. She's stuck up, but if she's hot or she's willing to sleep with you or the intimacy is good, a large portion of men will overlook that. So the men go in the opposite direction. I'd add if a man is with a woman he believes is above him. So if a man's in a relationship and I've talked to guys, oh, I just got lucky or I was batting above my weight, they'll sabotage that relationship with jealousy and becoming a, or becoming a doormat because he doesn't want to lose her. And this becomes highly unattractive and completely feminine. Why am I saying this about mass, comparing this to masculine men? Because masculine men are going to pull more women, period. That's just how it is. So they're, they're going to be probably more likely to have more opportunities to cheat, would, which the lot averages would say that it's going to happen more times than it's not. And I would say, I'm just going to go out on a limb here. This is no scientific proof. This is no studies. I'd say over 50% of the human population has or does cheat. 50, over 50%. We're talking world. World. And then there's probably 20 or 30% that would never tell you the truth. They would just take it to their grave. Okay. And someone would say, well, why, why would you, well, look, I've been doing this for four years. I talked to a lot of different people. Um, and the funny thing is someone, someone would say like, oh, men cheat more. Who are they cheating with? Right. It's done both ways. It's done with all sexes. It's done with, uh, you know, same-sex marriages. It's it's just how it is, okay? Strong morals and values will override cheating more than just being masculine. That being said, if a marriage is lacking, boring, or just lost all its intimacy, then a man will be more likely to cheat and find more reasons to validate it. Okay? People tend to stay in dead marriages longer for the kids, for financial reasons, and just to save face. They don't want to tell their family members or friends. Marriage is becoming more and more difficult to sustain because most of society is selling you on upgrades and not to put up with anything you find to be unfair. Think about that for a minute. I'm going to say that sentence again. Marriage is becoming more and more difficult to sustain because most, most of society is selling you on upgrades, whether that's you know the newest iPhone, the newest TV, the newest electric car. It's everywhere. And to not put up with anything you find unfair. If you're unfairly treated or disrespected, don't put up with that. How did marriages last? Someone had to put up with more crap than the other person. Correct me if I'm wrong. A marriage that lasts takes sacrifice and the ability to accept that you're not going to do better or get a better mate. You're accepting that this is going to be the this is going to be the one. And you know, if you're together 20, 30 years, you're probably going to come across a few opportunities where you're like, damn, she's hotter than my wife or he's he's a better provider than my husband. And that really eats people up because it never has been easier to cheat. Dating apps and escort services alone have changed the dynamics. It's as easy as ordering something on Amazon. I'm seeing this come up again and again. Okay, so... um blame it on a masculine man or not it's just going to be a reality in the 21st century number five be the best partner you could be when things start to get sour get on top of it right away don't let it fester or, or go unattended to so beyond just being you know looking your best being your best as a wife or a husband i would say one thing that i've noticed i've had past clients come to me when stuff starts so when you start having a problem that's when you that's when you contact me rather than wait for the breakup. Hey, I'm going through this right now. I've had I've had multiple 
clients now that come to me when the fire starts. And it's not that you're necessarily going to cure the situation right away, but the clarity, the understanding that you get will help you make a better decision that's non-emotional or impulsive. It's really good to have someone like me in your back pocket that knows relationships. Because when it when it comes to marriage, you're going to have problems. But the problem is, is when you let it go and you let it go and this breeds contempt. And then out of nowhere, someone goes, oh, my God, they just broke up with me. They didn't even warn me. Well, the shit's been there for a while. You just haven't gotten the hint. <clears throat> All right. We got a couple stories on deck. If you have a story you want to share, go to rightmac.com, send it in, and I'll review it in a YouTube live stream like this. If you want to book a live coaching session, go to rightmac.com. I'm going to check in with the live stream real quick. Uh, Eduardo Martinez, we are live if you're still on deck. Thanks for riding. Deep Poetic Society, what's going on, guys? How are you, coach? I'm excellent. Thanks for checking in. Justin Brown, hey now. Uh, G Money for the crown. Guaranteed Peter. That is totally accurate. I'm an exter I'm an external alpha gym rat benching 315. I'm completely emotionally non-centered around women. Well, thanks for being honest. Right? And that's that's okay. Deep poetic society with a name like that, you probably have a few feminine quirks to you. And, and this is what gets me is there's so much material on this on the internet where guys are acting like they're high quality or high value man like Fresh and Fit or one of these shows where they just go on and on and drill it. It's like, no one's bulletproof. Okay? No one's uh, He-Man or Masters of the Universe here. All right? Everyone's got some soft spots. And being okay with that is fine because you can be, you, you can have a feminine moment or two. All right? G-Money, thank you for the like. Brand new Skinner, yo. All right, let's get into the story. Coach Mac, I really like your take on things let me know what you think of my story my boyfriend broke up with me two days ago and now i'm wondering why he didn't just tell me the truth all along how could he lie for so long well some people they let a lie go and go and then they they pour more onto it and it gets harder and harder because the layers are deeper and deeper um i'm 21 and he's 22 people tend to lie more when they're younger little kids lie all the time uh, we've been together and I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's more apt to happen when people are younger and, and people that are younger tend to be more selfish. We've been together for three years and we've broken up once before because he caught me texting another guy, which I explained to him was nothing. And I never hooked up with that guy, but I did flirt a little bit, but I did apologize for that and never did it again. But honestly, I kept in touch with the guy as a friend. Okay. I can just envision you explaining this and he's already been there for me on this breakup listening to what happened and just being a good friend of course he is he's a back burner you know you you weren't into this guy at all but you knew he had feelings for you don't be a liar about that you're accusing someone else of lying um if you wanted to talk to the guy and flirt with him you were you told your partner what went down but you did lie that you're still talking to this guy right okay I'm glad we stayed in touch. My ex was always a bad listener and very selfish. When, when he broke up with me, he did over the phone on a video call and he said he had been cheating with a coworker and wanted to come clean, that it was just really hard to keep lying. I cried and asked how long. He said six months off and on, but now he'd like to see her more but not make her his girlfriend. He asked if I was okay with that. He said he researched open relationships and found that young couples can make them work. Absolutely. Um, I think it's going to be a more common thing in the future. Uh, that being said, it's this isn't the way to make it work. Um, and you have to be on board with it. Don't do something that you're not interested in just to please him uh, because it's, it's not going to work out that way. But is this going to be more common in the future? Sure. Uh, does it benefit him because he's already got one lined up? Hell yeah. And I, I would venture to say he's not going to be as willing to share you. That's just how guys are. And that he was even open to letting me date outside of him, but he'd get final approval on who got to hook up with me. Well, here's the thing. Did you get final approval on who he hooked up with? I was kind of shocked and I asked more questions because I was curious how this worked. As he went on, I felt myself hating him. And then I just yelled at him to stop talking and that I wasn't going to do that. It wasn't okay with me. 
It wasn't okay with me. And then he told me to think about it and get back to him. He then sent me a picture of the girl. I have to admit she's cute, but I do look better. Of course you do. Wow, this guy's got some guts, some gusto, man. I talked to my older sister and she said she always thought he was a snake and she never trusted him. She said, yes, there's open relationships, but you can't go from three years of monogamy to an open relationship. I agree. If you're going to if you're going to do open relationships, it's got to start that way. It can't be something three years later because you're grooved into being monogamous. Um, it's an expectation that's already built in and, and you can't just suddenly start to share. Um, most people aren't built that way. You have to start the relationship like that. And even though you're just leaving the door open to get played. She told me there were plenty of guys that would want me in a normal relationship. And the quicker I started dating and this ex found out that the quicker he'd come back. Oh, a little caddy move, huh? Well, people that are in their early 20s tend to be more jealous and controlling. And people ask me, you know, if you if you want to get someone's attention by dating someone else, um, does it work? It works better when someone has a large ego. Uh, so I think I'll give this other guy a chance and see if I can't use that on IG to get his attention. My sister already told me, make sure that I post a clip where the guy's coming out of the shower at my house. Wow, that's brutal. Uh, I actually know of someone years back whose uh, girlfriend at the time did this and there was a shower scene where she was passing the, the towel to the guy coming out of the shower and it, it lit up. It lit this guy up. Um, certainly, I think people don't think about this, but that would be going for the kneecaps. Uh, just make sure when you're doing this, know what you're doing it for. Are you trying to get the person back or are you trying to hurt them? Uh, a lot of times, be honest with yourself. In most cases, you're trying to hurt them. Sometimes stuff like this backfires where you push them farther away. You do get their attention in the moment, but they might never want to get back with you. This is something she did before months after a breakup. She had it. She had, and it wasn't intentional to get her ex mad, but she really just liked the guy, just liked the guy's body she was dating and wanted to show him off. Plus, she was broken up for six months at this point. But she said her ex contacted her days later with a guilt trip and telling her he missed her. She said it felt so good to reject him. All right, so just keep in mind, her situation is different. That was six months post-breakup. It wasn't intentional. She didn't even want him back. She just got to reject him. Okay, staging something like this fresh out of a shocking breakup where this guy hurt you, different scenario, different situation. I mean, what? This guy could say, oh, you did find someone else. Introduce them to me, right? I mean, I'm not into staging things. It's dishonest. You're already upset that this guy lied to you, and now you're going to lie back. Two wrongs don't make it right, okay? I'm thinking I should do something like this to get my ex back because I know he can get jealous, and it will get his attention. What's your take on this? You could do it. It could work. At the end of the day, he cheated on you. Um, and... You're lying after complaining that he lied to you. So, like I said, what what are you what are you creating here? Um, and then staging a you know a shower thing. I I don't like it if it's something you want to do. And I've known people that stage things and they've backfired on them because your partner knows you and they know when you're lying and it's a turn off and they might call you on it. And I don't know if you really want someone back. He's saying that he's been cheating for six months and wants an open relationship. He stated what he did wrong. You can forgive him for that. And he's also stated the, the request of what he wants. And you don't want to do that. But on the flip side, you, you feel like by doing something shallow like this, you'll get him back. I don't think you're going to erase the fact that he's been messing around. He's lied to you and he wants an open relationship. Okay. So I'd suggest you don't do that. But if you do... Just know that it doesn't always work. And when you lie about something and it doesn't work, it's pretty embarrassing. There's egg on your face for those ones. All right. If anyone in the live stream has any questions or comments or anything that you want me to talk about in the future, just let me go. I got one more story on deck. This was just sent in last night, actually. All right, let's get into it. Uh, dear Mac, firstly, I don't mean to toot my own horn. But I am a handsome dude and have no trouble attracting women. 
well, go ahead and toot your horn. If you're a client of mine or you work with me and you say something like that, I will give you a pat on the back. I will say, absolutely outstanding. Be confident. It's one thing to be confident in yourself. It's another thing to look down on other people. Those are That's arrogance. That's no bueno. You saying, I'm a handsome dude. I, attract, I have no trouble attracting women. Excellent. Outstanding. I'm happy for you. Be confident. Speak nice about yourself. I used to go to nightclubs solely to hit on women, but everything changed when I met my girlfriend and I changed my player ways for her, but there were still some dark aspects lingering in with myself. I initially attracted her because I was outgoing and charming. I seduced her. Good for you. I would like to start off by saying, mentioning that my girlfriend and I were together for four years and lived together. We were both still in love with each other. And she also has a five-year-old. Okay, lived together for four years and she has a kid that's five years old. That's that's a deep connection. That's very deep. <clears throat> I've known him since he was around one years old. Me and her had a great relation full of intimacy. The sex was amazing. She was satisfied and so was I. Outstanding. Good for you. She comes from previous abusive relationship. And I've showed her that it was what it was to have a loving and caring boyfriend and that will not raise his voice or dare hit her. Go for you, man. You sound like an upstanding gentleman. We have been through a lot together and I've been there for her when times are tough and she has been there for me as well. We have already broken up once because she wanted things to get serious and I couldn't give her an answer. So she broke up with me. I went into no contact and she contacted me three months later. We got back together and started living together. So anyone in no contact right now, make a note three months later, he was contacted um, and he just wasn't ready. He was a player. He, he didn't, he wasn't ready to commit and that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes the no contact or being apart from each other makes you the heart grow fonder. That's what it does. Fortunately, I made a terrible decision to cheat on her dun, dun, and she discovered I cheated because she logged into my computer and discovered my account on an escort website. She confronted me about it about it and at first i tried to deny it but ultimately i came clean and i answered her all her questions well you know i've said this many times you can lie but can you live with the guilt it just depends on your moral conduct code of conduct right and so i applaud you for just telling the truth and getting that out of the way uh, more times than not people get caught on the computer or their phone with situations like this and this is a classic case of what i've talked about before it's like amazon has never been easier if the spirit moves you to cheat, I am not sure why I cheated. <clears throat> I rationalized it in my mind to do it. I felt relieved from all my stress from providing for my parents and playing, paying all my bills while working 60 hours a week. If that's even a good excuse. Um, you know, I don't know your age range, but if you're in your 20s, um, it's a male thing to still be attracted to other women. And if you were a player in the past, you probably... Had an eagle to feed here. Uh, my therapist I was seeing concluded that I have trouble being vulnerable with someone and communicating my emotions. Uh, you know, this might just be the old fashioned. I'm just wanting to hook up with some other women. I know, I know that, you know, therapist wise, that wouldn't be proper. But I would say males in their 20s to early 30s, they're always looking at the menu and they always can get tempted. And it sounds like you did. That's not an excuse. Uh, but I would just say it's it's extremely male to, you know, want to hook up with other women. It, it's it's realistic. Doing it is another thing. There's a lot of things we want, but we, we can't do because of laws and different things like that. And so um, bottom line is now you got to um, establish, was it worth it now that you've been caught? Is it something that you would do again? Because if you think you'd do it again, then don't don't try to get back together. We were to get, people are allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Doing the same mistakes over and over again, you're just saying who you are. We were together another four months before she broke up with me. She had somehow discovered that I was still logging into the escort website. So, so, okay, so there you go, man. I admitted I had a problem. I needed to get help, but I never cheated again. <sighs> I don't know if you have a problem, but it's one of those things. Uh, certain things for males like porn. Uh, I haven't heard of this being one of them, but like it's almost like a drug. And it's addicting. <coughs> and it's.
and it's so easy to access now that you probably do need to get some professional help on it if you want to keep your relationship. You just got to figure out where where you want to be. Is this something that's really worth it for you? She said that she did not want to worry or cry about what I was doing, and she was hoping that I would stop and change. I guess she couldn't take it anymore. Well, if she forgave you the first time and you were up front and clean, but you got caught a second time, she has every right to make a different decision this time because obviously it was disrespectful, okay? And you you told her what you wanted to hear but did the same thing over again. She also said this breakup feels different from the previous abusive relationship. We have been broken up for one and a half months. I have deep, grief, deep regret of what I did, and I have been seeing a therapist to unpack my feelings of guilt and shame. I cry for hurting her. I really do love her. I'm not a bad person. I don't think, let me just, it's very easy to sit in my chair, okay? I'm not one of those people. I'm not Stephen A. Smith on an NBA game, okay? Where I just tear apart someone because they played bad or made a bad move. You're human, man. I don't think you're a bad person. I think the fact that you're going to a therapist, that you're sending a story in to someone like myself to get an outside opinion, you're working on the situation and you're finding your way right now. So I commend you for that. So I, I don't think you're a bad person. There's a lot of people that cheat or go on escort websites or do these kinds of things and never get caught. Okay. It's completely human. That's why there's a market for it, by the way. Right. I just made a terrible selfish decision. Well, there's your first step being accountable. We had plans to buy a house and get married. I'm having trouble reviving my confidence that I once had. I got a better paying job closer to home, which which has helped. But it hurts me to know that I have damaged the woman that I love. I've been avoiding clubs and bars. She doesn't think I'm going around getting girls. We live in a small town. Okay. I'm unsure of what I should do. She still allows me to hang out with her son. We play online games together, and I take him to the park every couple of weeks. My questions are, well, if she keeps you in the loop that way, that's a good sign. Um. That means she really values what you built with her son. And that's a link that if you were to get back together, it would be in your favor. My questions are, should I stay in no contact? Should I continue my relationship with her son? I would just make it crystal clear that you are, you, that you are, that you have gone to therapy, that you are sorry. And you've already done that, that you are extremely sorry. And that um, you do want to revisit things if she's ready to do so. And if she's not, uh, that's okay and just give her a space like you have been if in the past it took her three months to contact you it's probably going to take her three months again people have playbooks they don't even know they're there but this is what this is the reason why we have habits or characteristics about our personality the programs that we're running and so if she's done that once before where she came back there's a chance she'll do it again the fact that she gave you a chance the first time but then you got caught What's in your favor is you've been you've been honest, you've been accountable, and then you you didn't sleep on the fact that you had this relationship with her son and you want to keep that going. So that's that's all in your favor. Uh, continue my relationship with her son. Just be honest with yourself. Are you only continuing to see the son because you hope she'll get back with you, or because you really have a separate strong relationship with him? I mean, I'm guessing if you started out in the relationship he was one and now he's five. Um, I have nothing but respect and admiration for you to stick with that relationship and be a part of that kid's life outside of getting back with her. Um, but I do think that, I do think that you're in a good position right now, one and a half months out. You, you can't say sorry a thousand times. You can't pressure her and getting back together. You didn't do that before. Um, but <clears throat> give her her time and space, right? And stay in no contact. Stay in no contact for now is what my advice would be. And if you really have trouble with this and you have more stuff that you didn't explain to, and because this, this is what happens. A lot of times you'll send in your story like this and you won't tell everything because it might be embarrassing or you might let some out. If you want to do a live coaching session and get a little deeper on this, it'll help you. And I'll be different than the therapist for sure. Um, 
a lot of clients come to me and they go, oh, wow, I like talking to you better than my therapist. So as of right now, you're doing the right thing. I think you're doing the right thing. Don't rush it. And I, I, it's very commendable and admirable that you're staying a part of that kid's life. All right. I'm going to get into the live stream real quick, and then I got to go. Okay, so, and if you guys have any um, topics you want me to touch on next week, um, go ahead and put them in the comments, because I'll be back on deck 11 a.m. Pacific again. Um, I'm excited for our session on Monday. Right on, Miguel. I'm excited for it, too, but you're good people. It is embarrassing, bro. I lied thinking I could do it. But later revealed all the lies. Very embarrassing. Dude, this guy's story sounds like mine. At the end of the day, it's no, it's, you know, the truth will set you free. Um, it's definitely not going to keep your relationship, but it will set you free as far as your guilt. Cheating is one of those things that is intoxicating as a fantasy, but in reality, it's just terrible if you have a conscience. Absolutely, G Money. I think we get sold on it in a lot of movies and music, that it's a lifestyle, that it's great. You know, it's, you know, what's interesting to me is that, um, intimacy, uh, moments with multiple women, they're just moments, really. They don't outweigh love or a consistent, strong relationship. And you can't take intimacy with you. You don't even really, you know, if you had really good sex with a woman, you can't replay that or relive it. I, I guess you can replay it in your head, but. It's just an ego, Mark. And the more you do something like that, the more you realize it. Yeah, G-Money, bro, if, look me up, and I'm happy for learning the experience. Frankie! Frank! From New York! I was in despair two years ago. I'm glad the girl left me, worked on myself and body for a year, and my goodness, I can say I achieved great wish. Work on yourself, y'all. Distract yourself. It will come together. Right on, Frank, for the crown. I'm hoping my ex breaks no contact so bad she did the first time around, so I hope it happens again. Well, if she did it the first time around, it's more likely the second round, but keep keep working. Love your life. Live your life for you. Become the attraction. Health, beauty, and happiness. Strive for greatness every day. One day I woke up and said, I cannot live like this no more, and bam, it all came together. I'm glad I did no contact. Thanks for hearing me out when my best friend passed away and my girl left me twice being in the hospital and family members passing away in one year. No problem, Frank. No problem, my friend. You know, sometimes it takes just keep showing up. You're going to have hard times in life. People that don't have a lot of hard times are annoying people to be around because they find petty things to find hard in life. How you learn in life is having hard times. And sometimes you just get fed up and it pushes you in a direction like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to start living my life. I'm going to start improving. And Frankie did that here. How to avoid cheating in a relationship would be a good topic. Well, one thing I would say right off the head, G Money, don't be drunk in uh, temptation based areas with women that are available. I miss her so much. Where does this pain come from? Thanks for that topic, G Money, by the way. I miss her so much. Where does that pain come from? Um, well, just like when you were a little kid and someone wanted to play with your toy. Okay. Um, when we have something and lose it, it becomes much more valuable. That's a human condition. Um, and you can never really put the value because there's no number value on when you really, really are in love with someone wholeheartedly. And then that's taken away from you. You can't, you know, like when you, when, when, if you had a million dollars in the bank and you got it hacked out of your account, you could put a, a amount on that. And then you could say, I can make that back in a certain amount of time. You could track it down. There would be ways to go about it. Love's not like that. So it becomes this mystery of how to replace it. It's not measurable. And a lot of people have trouble with that. And a lot of times you don't even know you were in love. Love, bro, you're great at what you do. I found someone else, and man, she's so much better, although I wish my ex all the well. This is life. We only have one. Let's live. God is great. So is our coach. Frank, thanks. That gave me chills, bud. 
I'm so glad to hear that, man. I'm really glad. Thank you. I'm getting better and better every day. You say that to yourself, bud. That's a great statement to make. That's a great affirmation. Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck is a good book for that. Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck was a good book. Yeah, I like the first chapter especially. Stop trying. As the great Charles Bukowski said, notice slow, slowly letting her go. Um, I choose to move on. This is something I've told Miguel and I, I've talked to some other people. You know, when you say I have to, I should change your language to I choose. Yeah, you know, you know what I've noticed about books, Frank? I'm glad you came on deck today, too. Frank, you're in, in New York or New Jersey. For some reason, that's in my head. I could be wrong. I usually have a pretty good memory. Um, I just remember you were a Knicks fan, I thought. Anyhow, um, Chicago. Okay, I was off. I had a major city then. Okay, my bad. My bad. I knew that I know the name though. I've seen that name. <clears throat> Miguel says, dude, your fucking therapy technique worked. Are you talking about the tapping or the guided meditation? Anyone that wants to do some hypnosis work with me, hypnotherapy, which is like guided meditation, been using it with all my clients recently, and it's it's been really good. It's a big alternative to just talking about things. Two years ago. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll have to look up your emails to see where you were at. I definitely know your name. Frankie. <clears throat> um, getting back to the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Uh, great book. But what I was going to say is, you know, some of these books, it's the timing that you read them. So a lot of times when you're going through a breakup, that's a good time to read books on attraction because it's you're going to be all in on it. Um, Self-help books, there's a timing to read those. Self-improvement or business books, they're not going to work at certain times of your life because you're not dialed into them. It's like self-improvement books now. I read a lot before. I had like a little phase of that. And now they just seem repetitive. Really, they seem repetitive. Uh, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck was a good book. It's It's got a lot of stories to it. He's got a crafty way of writing. Um, and I would put it up there. But that's why now I have a library in my head where I'm like, this would be a good book for you, the individual. Wanting your ex back is just wanting to avoid the suffering of going through the breakup and accepting it. Absolutely. How to avoid cheating would be a good topic, I agree. Thanks, Frank. Everything, bro, it helps a lot. I feel like I have an advantage over my ex because I have your EFT therapy. EFT works, the tapping method. It's, I just had a client from uh, Singapore yesterday, and she said it's made a big difference for her. I don't want to cheat. There's beauty everywhere, but beauty doesn't last, nor does moments. Moments don't last. That's a big one, Frank. I'll, I'll be talking about that quite a bit. Yeah, me and Mac talked about cheating prevention in our session. You actually asked me that. Which Maybe that'll be the title of the show, Cheating Prevention, because I've never heard that word before. Miguel, I will say this. If you're in your early 20s, 21, 22, it's harder. Um, It works quite well, G-Money. The tapping method... Um. I mean, if you want to look it up, you can look it up. But EFT is a tapping method. It's, it's mixed with almost the style of affirmation. Uh, but the tapping methods, I do it with you. Uh, the hypnotherapy works really well because if you're in a private room and I'm in a private room, it actually makes it a lot more comfortable than being in a foreign office. Uh, for starters, when you're 21, your hormones are a lot higher and uncontrollable than, say, at 40, 41, like me. Uh, you're a jackrabbit out there. So that's one one of the reasons. When you're in your early 20s, you tend to be more selfish. You don't see the bigger picture. Uh, those are those are reasons. Doesn't doesn't mean you're a bad person. Well, think about it like this. If you're the, the younger you are, the more mistakes you make because you just don't know. A lot of times you want to touch the hot stove to get burned to teach you the lesson. You don't want people to tell you the lesson.
feel better, brother. It's summer and there's women everywhere. Let's keep working on ourselves. I can't wait for my sex drive to slow down when I'm old so I'm not controlled by it anymore. Do we should do WhatsApp group chat to help each other. Um, I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying when you're 21, yeah, when you're 21, it's it's kind of having an all-time high. It's just different. And then you haven't had the consequences of getting in trouble for it as much. <clears throat> and usually the women that are your peers when you're 21 are also full game too. Dude, I will always be a jack route even when I'm 80. Well, unfortunately, you can't. You can say that. Um, you can say that. But you're not at 80 yet. But you know what? Cheers to that, man. You asked me for my opinion, I gave it to you. Oh, take testosterone. I have clients like that. I have clients in their uh, 50s and stuff like that that take TRTs, and they say they work quite well. I'm pretty happy with mine. Uh, but it's just a funny topic. All right, folks, I do got to go. It's been good. It's been grand. Frank, I'm glad you joined today. I'm glad you're doing really well. It's always nice to just hear someone that I've talked to in the past that's two years later, a year later, doing really well and look back on maybe some advice I gave or something I might have said that, that was helpful and says, thank you. I really appreciate that. Dude, what's weird is I find myself less sad at my ex, more angry. And this is this normal? It is normal. It's a different stage of the breakup. It's absolutely normal. <clears throat> it's nothing to be alarmed about. All right, folks, it's been good. It's been grand. It is curtains.